Good morning and welcome to Walkburn South and a very warm to those visitors who are joining us this morning. I am pleased to inform the congregation that the nominating committee are now up and running and have started the search for our new minister. As part of this, we are putting together a short film about the church, which will go with the parish profile, which is now on the web page. As we are hoping to involve as many members of the congregation as possible, at the end of the service this morning and after the benediction, I would ask everyone to wave at their cameras as we will use this as part of the film. Turn your camera off for a few seconds if you don't wish to take part. Individually, if anybody is interested in taking part in the film, will they please email me before this Wednesday uh, as we hope to start filming the, the film on Saturday morning. I would also remind you that we will have the chat rooms at the end of the service, so please stay connected and have a chat for 10 minutes or so at the end. I will now pass you over to John McFadgen, who is leading the service this morning. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come into his presence with singing. Know that the Lord is God. It is he that made us and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him, bless his name. For the Lord is good, his steadfast love endures forever and his faithfulness to all generations. Let us now come into the presence of the Lord by singing, I stand amazed in the presence of Jesus the Nazarene.
Thank you for providing us with the means to communicate with each other during this time and to be able to still have a service and pray and listen to your word. We are living in uncertain times and fear surrounds us all, but we are reminded by your word that we should leave our fears and anxieties behind and focus on you as you will look after us. Help us to continue looking towards you for guidance and allow your spirit to show us the joy that can be brought to us and reassure us of our faith. Dear God, please help us to safely support other members of our community, both those within the church and those not. We pray for you to protect all of us and give us strength, give us the strength we need to cope with any hurdles we may face both personally and as a community. We come before you today, fueled by your spirit, ready to drop our nets and follow you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. Hello everyone. It's lovely to be with you again. Boys and girls, I wonder if you can tell me what these people are doing. If you said fishing, you'd be right. I wonder if you've ever been fishing. Have you ever caught a fish? It's not something I've ever done, but I have a good friend who loves to go fishing. It's a great sport, isn't it? And if you have been fishing and you've caught a fish, you know there's a great feeling of excitement when you catch a fish. One of the things that makes fishing such a great sport is that it doesn't matter if you're young or old, you can still be good at it. So what does it take to be good at fishing? Well, first of all, you need to have the proper equipment. You can't just get a piece of string, put a hook on it and tie it on the end of a stick and expect to catch many fish, can you? No. If you're serious about fishing, you'll make sure you have all the right equipment. You want a nice rod and a reel like these. The next thing you need to know is that you have to go where the fish are to catch them. Finally, if you want to be good at fishing, you must be patient. Sometimes the fish just aren't biting. You have to wait patiently. Our Bible lesson today has something to do with fishing. One day, Jesus was walking along the seashore when he saw two brothers named Peter and Andrew who had a fishing boat. Jesus began to preach from the middle of the lake right on this boat. Then he told Peter to put his nets down to catch fish. Peter tried to explain that he hadn't caught any fish all night, but he followed the directions of Jesus and put his net down again. When he did, he caught more fish than he could even carry. This made him realise that Jesus was something very special, was someone very special. Peter bowed before Jesus then. He was willing to do whatever it might take to follow this teacher. Peter left his fishing boat and his old job in order to become a disciple. Jesus told Peter and his brother Andrew that they would become fishers of men. This meant that he was going to use the former fishers in a different way. They would be gathering more followers for Jesus and would serve people and help people just like Jesus did. Jesus wants you and me to fish for people too. That means that Jesus wants us to tell others about what he has done for us and what he wants to do for them. Fishing for people is a lot like fishing for fish. First, we need to be properly equipped. We need to know what the Bible teaches and learn how to share it with others. Next, we go out where the people are and tell them about Jesus. And finally, we must be patient. If we do all these things, we can really become fishers of people like Jesus wants us to be. If you think there is a great feeling of excitement when catching a fish, just imagine how exciting it must be to bring someone to Jesus. Let us pray. Father, help us to become good fishers of men. Help us to be good examples by the way we act and what we say. Help us to show others your good news 
so that they will know you and follow you. Amen. The first reading this morning is from Psalm 62, headed Confidence in God's Protection. I, I wait patiently for God to save me. I depend on him alone. He alone protects and saves me. He is my defender, and I shall never be defeated. How much longer will all of you attack a man who is no stronger than a broken down fence? You only want to bring him down from his place of honour. You take pleasure in lies. You speak words of blessings, but in your heart you curse him. I depend on God alone. I put my hope in him. He alone protects and saves me. He is my defender, and I shall never be defeated. My salvation and honour depend on God. He is my strong protector. He is my shelter. Trust in God at all times, my people. Tell him of your troubles, for he is our refuge. Men are all like a puff of breath. Great and small alike are worthless. Put them on the scales and they weigh nothing. They are lighter than a mere breath. Don't put your trust in violence. Don't hope to gain anything by robbery. Even if your riches increase, don't depend on them. More than once I have heard God say that power belongs to him and that his love is constant. You yourself, O oh Lord, reward everyone according to his deeds. Chapter 1, from verse 1, reading through to verse 20. It is entitled, The Preaching of John the Baptist. 
This is the good news about Jesus Christ, the Son of God. It began as the prophet Isaiah had written. God said, I will send my messenger ahead of you to clear the way for you. Someone is shouting in the desert, get the, the road ready for the Lord. Make a straight path for him to travel. So John appeared in the desert, baptizing and preaching. Turn away from your sins and be baptized, he told the people, and God will forgive your sins. Many people from the province of Judea and the city of Jerusalem went out to hear John. They confessed their sins and he baptized them in the river Jordan. John wore clothes made of camel's hair with a leather be belt around his waist and his food was locusts and wild honey. He announced to the people, the man who will come after me is much greater than I am. I am not good enough even to bend down and untie his sandals. I baptize you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. Not long afterwards, Jesus came from Nazareth in the province of Galilee, and he was baptized by John in the Jordan. As soon as Jesus came out of the water, he saw heaven opening and the Spirit coming down on him like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, You are my own dear Son, I am pleased with you. At once the Spirit made him go into the desert, where he stayed for forty days, being tempted by Satan. Wild animals were there also, but angels came and helped him. After John had been put in prison, Jesus went to Galilee and preached the good news from God. The right time has come, he said, and the kingdom of God is near. Turn away from your sins and believe the good news. As Jesus walked alone along the shore of Lake Galilee, he saw two fishermen, Simon and his brother Andrew, catching fish with a net. Jesus said to them, Come with me, and I will teach you to catch men. At once they left their nets and went with him. He went a little further on and saw two other brothers, James and John, the sons of Zebedee. They were in their boat getting their nets ready. As soon as Jesus saw them, he called them. He left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired men and went with Jesus. Amen. And may God bless these readings from his holy word. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be forever acceptable unto thee, my Lord, God, Saviour and Redeemer. The Gospel reading for today comes from Mark. Mark is very direct and to the point. The Gospel does not beat about the bush, but immediately gets down to serious business. Its introduction is short, the beginning of the Gospel about Jesus Christ, the Son of God. This may remind us of other beginnings. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Mark is announcing that this is another special beginning, starting out afresh in God's relationship with people. Mark is it romantic, no wise men, no stable, no star, no shepherds. A nativity play based on the Gospel of Mark would be very short or rather non-existent. Jesus appears out of basically nowhere as a full-grown, mature man. Out of the desert vapours, as one of my commentaries mentioned, he is ready for action. He has been baptised by John the Baptist in the River Jordan, and he has been tested in the wilderness for 40 days and 40 nights by the devil. Now, 
his ministry is to begin. And he chooses some companions to share this action-packed story with. Simon Peter, Andrew, James and John, simple fishermen. Jesus had just started travelling and preaching. His message, the time has come, the kingdom of God is near, repent and believe the good news. Maybe these four fishermen had already heard him speak or heard of him. We don't know. The Gospels does not tell us. The kingdom was indeed near. It was walking, eating, talking, loving, teaching, touching. Heaven had definitely touched down to earth and people could feel it. They knew it Maybe they couldn't always put words to it, but they knew it deep inside. There is an old-fashioned saying that it is better felt than told. The religious establishment knew it too. They realised that the real McCoy had arrived, and they felt it as a threat to their way of controlling things. The beginning of something new also means the end of something else. These four simple, uneducated men knew it. No questions asked. They stopped what they were doing and followed. Luke and John embellished the story with the miraculous catch and the scenario that involves a fig tree but Matthew and John only present the bare facts. They got up and followed. Jesus had used, as he so often did, what people knew about from their daily lives in order to show them something new. He promised these men that they would become fishers of men. In three words, Jesus summed up what the rest of their lives would be like. But little did these men know what that would entail. Working and waiting patiently to catch people in the nets of God's amazing love. This was the beginning of something new, of heaven and earth touching. The kingdom of God was there. It was present amongst them. They left their boats, their nets, their families. They left everything that gave them security. Leaving their nets and boats, leaving what was familiar to them, giving up their way to make a living. They would be totally dependent on this irresistible man. Nets and boats was their security in life. A question that easily comes out of this is, what are our nets? What are our boats? What are we clinging to and not giving up? Job security? Money? Resentment? Could it be a grudge? Prejudice? Fear of failure? Fear of being let down? Fear of self-isolation? Fear of the COVID virus? Loneliness? Depression? Unemployment? What are the things that are holding us back from completely trusting and following Christ? What fears are we clutching onto that snuff out our joy? What anxieties are we still holding tight to that disrupt the peace of knowing someone is in control of our lives and that someone will not let us go? 
These four men risked it all. But why? Because they knew deep in their gut that the kingdom had arrived and had moved into their lives. They would never be the same. Something new, the new beginning was happening right before their eyes and they wanted to be part of it. Who is this man Jesus? They could get a sense of him in his presence. Let me take you to Psalm 42. Jesus, the Word who was present at the beginning of time, who possessing all the characteristics of God was there. In our reading this morning, which Jim read so beautifully from the Old Testament, Psalm 62 describes him very well. My soul finds rest in God alone. My salvation comes from him. He alone is my rock and my salvation. He is my fortress. I shall never be shaken. Our souls find rest. He is the source of salvation, our unshakable fortress. That is Jesus. The psalm continues, repeating these first verses as a refrain, giving more images of strength and compassion, a rock, a refuge. Then the psalmist tells us to pour out our hearts to him. What is on our hearts this morning? that we need to pour out to him and trust in him fully to deal with our shortcomings. What is holding us back from being and reaching the full potential that God intends for us to reach during our lifetimes here on this earth? What are our nets? When we look around us, do we get glimpses of the kingdom of God? Since Jesus' time on earth, death and resurrection, the kingdom has been present. The more that we are able to trust completely, the more that we will be able to see it, experiencing the deep joy and peace of Christ. The more that we experience this, the more we will be able to serve the more our service will be effective for God. We are his hands, eyes and feet in this world that is so desperate for his love. Later on in Jesus' ministry, Peter and the disciples are in a boat. Jesus comes to them walking on the water. They were terrified. Jesus reassures them, it's me. Do not be afraid. Peter gets out of the boat and starts walking towards Jesus. Then he notices the strong wind. He doubts. He is afraid and he begins to sink. Whether Peter walks in water or sinks depends on where his focus is. The same is with us. Where is our focus? Where is our focus. Even if we are doing so many good things, our focus may not be on Jesus. Religiosity and doing good deeds can replace Jesus at the centre of our lives. Our focus needs to be on Christ. There is only one mediator between man and God and that's the man Christ Jesus. Our total trust needs to be with him. When we leave our nets, get out of the boat, risking and starting something new that we never dared to do before, then life takes on a new dimension. When we take risks with Jesus, our faith will grow. So will our peace and joy. So will our effectiveness in serving. It is time to leave our comfort zones and what is familiar and risk following Jesus completely, trusting the one who is our rock, our refuge, our salvation 
our unshakable fortress. This is who we must put our faith in and nobody else. There is no other name under heaven and earth that can save but Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Mark's whole gospel is the start of something new. It is the introduction to a new beginning with Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Let's drop our nets and follow, trusting him completely. The kingdom of God has arrived. I am urging you this morning to grasp it and never let it go. Now is the day of salvation. Now is the accepted time. Drop your nets, cast them at the feet of Jesus. Let the pain go. Let the unforgiveness which is causing you grief go. Let the past go. My dear friends in Christ, I urge you to drop your nets. And then, like the Apostle Paul, we can cry, Rejoice again, I say, rejoice in the Lord. This morning, I leave you all at the foot of the cross. As a church, may we grow even more. May we love even more. May we freely forgive. Picture Jesus on the cross with his arms open wide. Father, forgive them because they do not know what they're doing. Accept his forgiveness and forgive yourself. I believe that there is someone who needs to hear that their sins are forgiven. I leave you at the foot of the cross. Tell him what's troubling you, what's on your mind. He already knows. You cannot run from him, neither can you hide from him. Talk to him and be led by the nail print hand. In finishing, listen to the words of this old redemption hymn. There is a fountain filled with blood, drawing from Emmanuel's veins. Sinners plunge beneath the flood, cleansed from thy guilty stains. Let us proclaim what burns south this morning. Let us proclaim together. We do believe, we will believe, that Jesus died for us, and on the cross he shed his blood from sin to set us free. The fountain is flowing. Will you receive the cleansing this morning? Jesus' arms is open wide and he will not turn you away this morning. Accept his invitation where you are and just as you are. Glory be to the Father. Glory be to the Son. Glory be to the Holy Spirit, God free in one. Amen. Let us bring to God our prayers for others. Let us pray. We turn to you, our Father, in our hour of need, for we have nowhere else to turn. Lord Jesus, as you have promised, be with us, whatever lies ahead. We put our faith in you because you have proved your faithfulness time and again. Strengthen us, Holy Spirit, as we face these difficult times together. We pray for our beautiful country and for the wider world, as coronavirus threatens our lives and our livelihood, leaving many in lockdown while key workers continue despite the risk. We pray for government leaders at Westminster and Holyrood as they try to respond to medical and scientific advice, making tough decisions for the well-being of all. Lord, help us to respect and adhere to the advice given, even if we cannot always understand what we are being told to do or why. We pray for all who serve on the front line in the NHS and in social care, facing once again increasing numbers of patients, overstretched resources and distressing human need. Bless those who are ill, both at home and in hospital, those who are alone and afraid, those exhausted looking after their family, those worried for the vulnerable, those fearful for their finances those shut in to their fears, those who are homeless. Lord, we remember particularly 
those who have issues with their mental health, those who feel they have no one to turn to for encouragement. Help them to realise that you are near, that they only need to call out to you and you will always hear their call. In the silence of these few moments, we bring to you those we know personally who need special care at this time. We remember those who cannot visit loved ones in locked down care homes, as well as the elderly whose social contacts have been severely curtailed. Help us to find and use creative ways of keeping in touch, of assuring them they are not forgotten or ignored. Thank you, Lord, for those working to manufacture and distribute needed resources, those trying to understand this virus better and who are working to create an effective remedy, those who are trying to keep in contact with the isolated to encourage others at this time. May this crisis bring out the best in us, not the worst. May it make us generous and not selfish. Help us to live by faith and not by fear, to build bridges, not barriers. We pray for our school children and college and university students that their education will not be adversely affected by the COVID-19 pandemic. And for teachers and lecturers who try to continue to educate our young people, be with them, guide them and keep them safe. Lord, while we long to be able to once again gather together in our church buildings, we thank you for the technology which allows us to worship together remotely. We ask that all congregations may find new ways of living through this time. We thank you, Lord, that at this time of vacancy in Whitburn South, we have been able to form a nomination committee and we ask that you will guide the committee in its work and that you will, in due course, lead a new minister to our church to lead us forward in our Christian witness in our town and parish. May we not forget our faith, but draw strength from it. So may our worship be heartfelt, our fellowship deepen, and our service increase. God of grace and mercy, hear our prayers at this time. We pray for those who have been made homeless due to wildfires and flooding in other parts of the world. We remember the many who have lost their lives, homes and livelihoods, and for the families who mourn them. We pray for refugees from wars, which sadly continue in the Middle East and elsewhere. And we pray earnestly for peace throughout the world. May political leaders worldwide be guided as to how best to work with each other for the good of all. Father God, strengthen us by your Spirit, so that we may carry on our lives as best we are able, looking out for others, showing love in action, being faithful in prayer, and bringing encouragement, hope and peace, always trusting in you, our Rock and our Redeemer. These prayers we bring to you in Jesus' name. Amen. We now continue our worship by singing together, To God Be the Glory. Lord, 
which is beyond all understanding. Guard your hearts and your thoughts in Christ Jesus. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be with us all, now and forevermore. Amen. <laughs>